invitation came to me uh, being directly involved in saving the, let's say, safeguarding the site in 2012 when I was um, asked to lead scientifically the preventive excavation along a sector of, uh, in construction at that time, motorway along the most important river in uh, Middle Transylvania, the, Mur the, um, the Moorish. Um, having uh, also a PhD in the history and development of archaeological heritage in Romania, but also confessing that I work as a private consultant for a very disputed project in Romania, a Russia Montana project, I found myself in an uh, unbelievable situation by the end of 2012. Given the fact that the site I will uh, present you briefly as a study case, was not at all uh, known prior to autumn, very late autumn 2011. And also I have to, uh, in a way, I believe scare you in telling you that archeology span up to 2014 in Romania was called in relation to the construction on the, of the motorways only in the construction phases. Basically no prior evaluation was done when the feasibility studies are uh, made. The result, I believe it's a disaster. So, although we ad adhered to the um, Valletta Convention, our, uh, let's say, main legislation, uh, it's stating principles. My presentation will show you that sometime only to state a principle is not in fact protecting the site. And also there is a different perspective. We tend to see only the developers as, as the, m how to say, the main threats to a, uh, to a site uh, forgetting, in a way, the other uh, stakeholders, like in this case you will see it is simply agricultural works, who in fact are destroying more without paying any attention to the heritage. Just a brief, um, um, let's say, definition. The archaeological heritage, we have to understand it, or at least I understand it as a legacy. And uh, it's important to know that under the Romanian legislation, this legacy is in a way taken care by the state. And the state, yes, it's uh, one of the main stakeholders. And as I've told you, after the 90s, we've adopted in a hurry a huge bunch of legislative texts, which I dare to believe are not um, working properly. As in a case like the one from Tartaria, when you discover um, only in a very late stage of construction a site, only partially impacted by the motorway, but with the remaining huge uh, part uh, affected by agriculture and how you can protect it. As I've told you, these are very brief, um, let's say, sketches of, of our legal system in uh, Romania. The idea is that, yes, Valletta is recognized as a, at a level of the authorities, but in fact is not put in practice. In theory, yes, we do have the three areas of uh, expertise, the culture, heritage legislation, the environmental one, and the town planning and uh, construction legislation. But the integra integrated conservation principle, it's a beautiful phrase without substance. It's intended to show how complex it is our system in dealing the administrative and the scientific issues in regard to the protection of archaeological heritage. But in a, in a way, it's also diffusing the responsibilities and the roles of the authorities at the central and the local level when we, uh, you, they have to take a decision in regard of uh, protecting a, a a not um, priorly known uh, known site. Various dif uh, different layers of stakeholders. Let's say this is a very br uh, rough picture of the academic framework for archaeology in Romania. This is the administrative one, but only focusing on the one related to heritage. But also important to mention that uh, both the local co uh, the county councils. Uh, the mayor, um, the mayors, and the local council councils do have, in theory, a lot of duties in regard to heritage, which, in fact, they don't care about and don't take into 
uh, consideration. And for sure, it is the public, and what we are uh, we know uh, we are calling the community archaeology, and it's this the general um, the general public and the general interest in regard to heritage, and uh, combined with a series of local interests, like in the case. Uh, this uh, landowner you will see in uh, Tartaria. The main problem for not having a, a truly protection system in uh, Romania for protecting the archaeological heritage, it's the very diluvian, I will say, system of recording our archaeological heritage. We don't have a digital database related to a GIS project. And the result, nobody is knowing where exactly the sites, even the known one, are located. Uh, I have to say there were a lot of attempts to, to map these various uh, levels of uh, protected heritage, but the Ministry of Culture was simply um, ineffective in uh, centralizing and uh, focusing all these uh, all these approaches, the result being even nowadays we do, don't do have a national archaeological repertory related to a GIS. And I will dare to say because also we are speaking about the Malta Convention, the result also it's a huge nowadays public fight with the metal detectors where they are allowed to detect and where is placed a site. Simply nobody in Romania can answer you in very precise terms. Uh, this being said, these are, let's say, the key issues I've seen in uh, a Romanian perspective. What is missing in terms of trying to safeguard uh, a site? Basically, yes, we do have the Valletta Convention. Yes, we do have the national uh, legislation. But the practice, as you will see, it's completely different. Or I will say, in fact, it's in a completely different uh, direction. This is a, um, a regional map of the sites uh, of the um, pla um, uh, at the very beginning of the first millennia uh, BC. It's a dedicated ceramic um, style uh, which characterizes uh, large uh, areas of nowadays Romania, uh, Hungary, Serbia, north uh, western Croatia, this Bessarab type uh, style. And uh, this map is just showing you the status prior to the commence of the construction of the motorway, only related to, in relation to this chronological, uh, to this chronological um, phase. The location of the site on the Muresh Valley and uh, a picture at the very end of the excavation in, uh, in August uh, 2000, uh, sorry, in August uh, 2007, 2010, right? No, what is it? Because the color is probably hmm? because of the screen. Screen. Oh, yeah. sorry. Then I will show you. Basically, <laughs> this is the track of the motorway. The site um, only impacted by the motorway are these two parts, but the remaining part is this huge plateau you are seeing right now with a special remark that most probably, in fact, uh, the historic landscape was impacted in la uh, late 19th century by the construction of the railroad and the national road uh, along the, the Muresh Valley. But absolutely no prior, uh, prior concern was given even to this type of uh, information. Uh, this is the map I was provided in <laughs> spring 2012 in regard to the site, the green area, uh, it's what was um, preliminary outlined as a prehistoric site to be excavated um, <laughs> in less than four months. And the pink area was, is what uh, we have uh, find out it has to be added to the research project. Uh, while we were already all working in the, in the field, uh, two months after the beginning of the preventive uh, archaeological excavation. I will dare to say to you that basically when I started uh, the excavation in 2012, I was completely in blind. Nobody knew exactly what to expect in there. Very, uh, this is the, uh, the way the site simply looked in uh, spring 2012. 
I will move forward on the details and this is the result. Uh, what you see in dark uh, blue are the trial trenches to try to understand the general stratigraphy and to the main location of the archaeological features and what is in purple it's a very complex system of open area excavation to understand and document exactly what the features are. And the results are this. It's an area full of archaeology and archaeological potential with uh, a special remark on the finds. This is a, uh, the, the special material which are uh, it's the richest um, Iron Age uh, mid Middle Iron Age, sorry, uh, site in uh, Romania nowadays in terms of metallic finds, both uh, bronze and iron, with a special remark to the, to the special finds, two bronze hordes and iron uh, objects found in an outlining ditch. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. This is the outlining ditch. Uh, it's a natural ravine which, with uh, anthropic intervention something a feature completely unknown for other sites and which was possible to document only by this type of excavation the open area excavation one have to say very clearly that uh, the the funds for scheduled um, excavations in romania simply does not allow to uh, document and properly understand such a structure and only and i will have to say Yes, preventive archaeology in a way it's destructive, but in a way, uh, in if you decide, um, if you project correctly your research agenda, you can use those finds in properly documenting and understanding a certain uh, a certain historic uh, period. The second find was just three meters in the same uh, in the same uh, level, the se the second bronze hoard, and also. You will see in here, uh, it's another particular find. It's a collective grave uh, and uh, completely unknown for this period for the nowadays Romanian territory. But during the last uh, six to seven years, comparable finds have been made in uh, eastern and southeastern Hungary, also in relation to motorway construction, but also in... Um, in nowadays uh, Serbia, so it's the the evidence for this uh, particular phenomenon of the middle, uh, early and middle uh, Iron Age period along the Danube, middle Danube and lower Danube are starting to to build uh, to build a, a file, and more uh, more interesting when uh, we map the bronze hordes of this uh, historical um, sequence. We see that the area between Orestia and Alba Iulia, it's, a v it's very rich in uh, these finds, and also that they are all located uh, on the ends of the valleys, uh, river valleys, coming from uh, a mountainous area very uh, well known for salt deposits, uh, gold deposits, and uh, non ferrous uh, ferrous deposits. So yes, uh, proper, uh, a proper um, archaeological uh, repertory prior to this excavation would have helped enormously in understanding this historic environment. Mm -hmm. And further, I've managed uh, since the end of 2012, understanding the nature of the site, uh, I uh, entered, I will dare to say it's a personal battle to try to save the site. As you see, this is the part investigated throughout preventive archaeological excavations and this is the remaining area on which we've pef performed large-scale um, uh, geophysics surveys in 2004 and 2016 uh, in, tri in trying to gain the battle with archaeology uh, with sorry agricultural works as you see it is an intensive um, uh, agricultural area Moreover, to say, nobody ta uh, has uh, given attention to the meaning of the sites in the area and what the law is stating right now, that for the areas uh, found outside uh, urban, um, urban zones, you have to give to an archaeological site, which is listed as a historic monument, 500 meters. And I just want to show you that this is the famous Neolithic site from Tartaria, the one with the 
first examples of writing in Europe. And uh, with European funds, they um, <laughs> built uh, somewhere between 2015-2016 a waste dump. Yes, I know it's shocking. And the others are two major um, excavations that are completely unreported from uh, an archaeological surveillance uh, in um, artificial ponds for uh, fishing. And the picture is showing you the degree from 50, uh, 50 to 100 meter of this protection area which uh, should exist for uh, such sites. It's a very clear demonstration in my opinion that yes, we do have a law, but in fact, it's just words. And the preliminary results of the geophysics made in 2014 and 2016, I will scare you once more. Uh, this, um, these pipelines were completely unaware to all the authorities at the level of the county and the mayor house. Uh, it's only the, the geophysics they find out. So this is unfortunately the situation with our basic uh, town planning documentation when dealing with uh, archaeology. What you see, it's also represented the results of the excavation in 2012. And all uh, these are, let's say, the preliminary indications of geophysics. And this is the, the once again the plateau and the location of the test excavation made in 2016 and uh, 17, proving 100% that all the indications provided by the geophysics are true. It's the same concentration of archaeological materials, former uh, um, pits, refuse pits, uh, rest of uh, dwellings, with a very rich archaeological materials, both in terms of pottery and uh, metal uh, and metal. Instead of conclusions, yes, we do have a legal system, but uh, when we are, we are narrowing the images in seeing exactly how it's functioning, the sad truth is it does not function. And uh, I do believe, still, I do believe that uh, throughout a very staged approach, approach and using my um, expertise both as an archaeologist but as a heritage consultant, I will manage at least to save part of this completely amazing site. Thank you very much. Thank you.